Good afternoon, everyone. Glaciers melting over Greenland, 1939. NASA just tried to disappear that warm period that occurred once before. Oceans melting Greenland. Incredibly beautiful images of glaciers. Greenland's summer ocean bloom. Hypothesis, I thought the science was settled. NSIDC, notice the blue line. Wait a second, how'd that get all smooth? Anyway, the arrows are still record ice growth over Greenland. Arctic sea ice. Notice how they changed the parameters so it still looks like ice is declining. Sea ice extent increasing. Northern hemispheric snow increasing. But what about the Greenland ice loss? See that stall? Yeah, that matches with the AMO. There's a lot going on. They're not telling you about the Northern Hemisphere ice gains. And please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030 while you're watching the video and click that bell so you can stay subscribed. Glaciers melting over Greenland. Oh wait, that's 1939. You think that's a repeating pattern? Taking a look at NASA data, they tried to make that warming spike disappear. Yellow's actual black line NASA adjustments over Reykjavik. Now let's take a look at the AMO. You notice how it's flattened there and it's starting to decrease into the cooling. Cryosat up there to prove Greenland glaciers are melting. All it proves is we're on a 60 year cycle in the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. Notice the stall. That's exactly what we see in the AMO temperatures. But over to Greenland today, notice how much ice gain there is on the east side of those glaciers in Greenland, coastal. And NSIDC gives us the Greenland melt extent. Please notice the top. Notice how they're now breaking it into interdecile and interquartile ranges when just last year they were using two standard deviations. You know why? Well, the ice is so far below the average cumulative melt area that it's a record. We have to go back into the early 1980s to find something like this. They're stunned when it's a little bit above average melt, but crickets in the media when it's below melt average. Here's what I mean. This is from DMI, which is Danish Meteorological Institute. I want you to notice July. Take a look at that little first spike and then the larger secondary spike and there are two standard deviations. NSIDC, the exact same thing. Why is that first spike so much higher? Again, let's take a look at NSIDC's surface melt area, west coast, Greenland, September 22nd. Notice the area on the map there. I'm gonna bring you over to Null School. We'll take a look. September 22nd, minus 7.2 Celsius. I thought water froze at zero. So minus seven is seven degrees cooler than water freezes. So I don't know how there's even melt days there. A lot of anomalies coming along. Here's something you're really gonna like. Showing the surface mass balance, meaning how much ice is gaining or being lost over Greenland. That blue line, record ice gain 2016-17. And when you compare that to the red line of 2012, when we come over to August, look at the giant difference in the 2012 year to 2017. And then we'll forward and, whoa, how did that get smoothed out for this current chart today? I put the orange arrow showing you still record ice growth. But notice how that flipped and how that looks so much less than a record the way they stretch the chart to make it look this way. Greenland's summer ocean bloom likely fueled by iron, meaning glaciers are melting and the runoff water is carrying all these different types of iron rich soils and it's causing algae blooms. It's washed off the rocks and soil and glaciers are melting. It's only a hypothesis. Wait a second. You told me the science is settled and it's a hypothesis and you're asking for more money. Yeah, right. Greenland and hot water earth expeditions. OMG, it is so hot and so melty, but you just saw record ice. Significant contribution to Greenland's peripheral glaciers. Sea level rise. Stunning images though. I'll run you through a couple of what's on here. They're trying to say that this 
glacial melt is now carving deeper channels in the ocean at depth and they've even mapped it out to show you where the glaciers are being lost there's more melt water there's just more happening and look that even affects the bottom of the ocean this glacier is melting seafloor depths on the west coast measured by sonar oceans are melting in greenland they have some great aerial photos here let me run these down for you but please remember, Greenland was inhabited, and they called it Greenland during the medieval warming period. And this ice was not as dense or thick. There were settlements, they grazed herds, and we are in a cycle. Greenland goes from warmer pasture lands to cold ice lands. And barren coasts like this with glaciers to the sea, and when it's in its warm phase, those are pasture lands where they grazed animals. Now you keep hearing the Arctic sea ice melting to oblivion. There'll be no more sea ice. Let's look at September 17th. I just pulled this from last month to show you the ice gain. This is in September, not October. Ice gain since 2012 in that light green. The amount of ice loss, 2012. The reason I'm using the September chart is the end of the melt season. This is maximum melt. And you can clearly see there's more ice gain than there is loss this year. Arctic ice extent, notice two standard deviations. You see that blue line getting right into the gray of two standard deviations. What did NSIDC do? Well, they just turned that into interquartile and interdecile range. So it shows it's below average, but it's really not. They're just doing tricks with the graphic displays. Now you can choose either one of these when you're in the website, but the one they put publicly always, they have until this year, when it goes against the global warming model, they went away from the two standard deviations and now they're showing the interquartile, interdecile range to make it appear as if ice is still below normal, when you can clearly see it's not. Over to Rutgers Snow Lab, let's start back in September. We'll move forward to today. Can you look at the snow cover? Right side's 2017, left is 2016. You can see as we go through Asia, seems to be gaining the most snow so far out of all the continents this year in the northern hemisphere this goes right along with what was seen during that exact same time that bright blue spot over asia and the bottom graphic that's the cold that's the snow chinese are well aware of every dynasty collapsing during a grand solar minimum so when you start to see patterns like this, knowing we're entering another grand solar minimum, knowing that that area over China, Heilongjiang, Inner Mongolia, Mongolia, and you start to see that snow coming over, that's the signals you're looking for in pattern recognition. Fall Northern Hemisphere snow extent increasing. Also the winter Northern Hemisphere snow extent I'm curious how they put that blue line there already because we're not done with 2017 yet. So anyway, these are the kind of anomalies I see as I dig through the information. Now they're filling in things before it's even completed in the data set. These sunspot cycles, they come. They're recognizable when the grand solar minimums start. They're forecastable, and we are going into another grand solar minimum. So everything above, they're masking the information. Things are showing signs of increase when they should be decreasing if we're going into global warming. And I invite you to join me for episode 35 on Mini Ice Age Conversations where I talk with David Dilley about definitive dates for the onset of major global cooling, and that is 2019. You are out of time. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. The food price rises and the crop losses begin right now. This harvest season, look for a bump up on the futures market.